Most people in America are quite familiar with the aspect of human boundaries that impact their workplace. In the workplace, we know under human resources and basically human resource laws that people are not allowed to really touch people at all. Some people naturally try to touch someone on the back if they're having a bad day. Some people naturally try to put their hand on someone's shoulder to impress upon them that they're a leader in that moment or space. And what we know from sexual harassment cases that none of that is acceptable under the law. What I learned when I was working in manufacturing a very long time ago in my late 20s and possibly early 30s, I can't really remember now, but basically that the only place you can touch another human being in your colleague work set is on the forearm between the wrist and the elbow. Any other touch can be misconstrued, misused, and abused by someone that you touch. Amongst friends and families that are families of choice, in places like jobs, we still do sort of abuse the lines. We still sort of maybe abate the law because someone might really need a hug and they'll just say, just hug me, you know, or whatnot. But when you're leaving a job because you're going on to something else, your friends or your colleagues might hug you goodbye. And that's sort of normal to American culture. But what we have to talk about is really something that we have to be concerned about is that there are people who are black, white, and otherwise who think, motherfuckers, that they have the right to touch you in the night, do anything they like, as long as you're asleep. And the truth is, you absolutely know that that is a form of rape, a form of abuse, if they're harming you or cutting things off or cutting you or destroying your clothing. In my situation, I'm a man of 52, 53, and I'm just going to throw that out there. Let my parents, if they were still with us, count that up. But what I'm talking about is that I know how clothes of my life, because of the fabrics I choose for me, are supposed to wear and tear, even if I love that shirt to death and wear it every day. What I'm finding when I wake up is someone is actually pulling the strings out of my clothing. I'm finding that someone has cut buttons off my shirt. I'm finding that my clothing is drenched in water. And I have not done that. I actually air them out quite regularly when I leave and go places to just rest for me. And I put them in the sun to do that. So when I wake in the morning and find them full of water, I'm questioning who would do that. When I wake and find the clothing on me having pulled strings, I'm questioning who would do that. When I find clothes that I have worn cut and the videos about that deleted, I'm wondering who the fuck thinks they have the right to do that. Because what you think you're doing in the shadows isn't really in the shadows. What you're doing is doing something that I guarantee someone else is walking by and looking at you through binoculars or a monocular and seeing you do that. And all they have to do is make one call to police and the police will say, well, let them do it enough because we don't care about that person because it's not our family, it's not our friend, it's not our child, it's not our neighbor, it's not someone we care about, but eventually we're going to take them to jail. So basically, those people are aiding and abetting abuse too. But if the attacker is an officer, how do you protect yourself? If the attacker is a liar of the force, what do you do for yourself? If the people in a sheriff's office think they have the right to monkey around with your IDs, how the hell do we protect ourselves when those documents are nationally protected by the federal government? 